And joining me now is the leader of the Liberal Party, Justin Trudeau. Mr. Trudeau, thanks very much for being here. Always a pleasure, Tom. I can't remember a party ever coming out with such a far-reaching or radical proposal on democratic reform. But because it is so far-reaching, why wouldn't you put this to a referendum? Well, I think the, the first thing we have to understand is the reason we have to bring in so many broad changes on so many different levels is because for 10 years, Mr. Harper has basically broken Ottawa and the way it functions. Uh, this is the most secretive, non-transparent, unaccountable government we've ever had. Uh, and the desire to actually open things up and change things around across the board is really important, not just to restore people's confidence, but to actually deliver better government and better better service to Canadians. But my point is this, that you promised to bring in a new system within 18 months, but why not put it to the people? Well, I think putting it to the people is very important, and that's why we've uh, promised to engage with experts, with massive consultations of Canadians, uh, to involve all parties in a discussion and a debate around it, because the one thing you want to remove from discussions like this is the idea of political advantage. Any party that proposes a single solution is going to be probably justifiably looked uh, with a little bit of suspicion by Canadians who are saying, well, you're picking the option that will suit your party and its particular nature. And that's why uh, calling on experts and independent study as a top level uh, go-to, uh, rather than falling into too much uh, partisan back and forth and even contesting, uh, is, is our preferred option. Well, have you got any reason to believe the Canadians are any more willing to accept this type of democratic reform when it was rejected in Ontario and it was rejected in British Columbia? Well, I think one of the things that uh, that uh, I've heard across the country is how frustrated Canadians are uh, with how Ottawa, specifically this Harper government, is behaving, but also how cynical people are, are having to be about politics. We're, we're not a cynical country of cynical people. We tend to believe the best, be open, compassionate, willing to work together, and we have a government that does exactly the opposite. So uh, to, to say that, you know, something has to change, we have to start valuing valuing Canadians' voices again, we have to start valuing Canadians' votes again, uh, is a message that, uh, that is getting an awful lot of resonance right across the country. I want to go to another aspect of your democratic reform package that you promised to bring in if you form government, and that is the idea that in future all Supreme Court justices must be bilingual. So let me sketch out this scenario for you. Let's say that there is the brightest legal mind in the country and she happens to live in Newfoundland, but she doesn't speak French. So are you telling me that she would be rejected to sit on the Supreme Court simply because she doesn't speak French? It, it's not just a question of symbolism of being a bilingual country and expecting that our prime minister and our most important uh, uh, adjudicators and judges be uh, bilingual. It's, it's more than that. Imagine a situation in which uh, those nine judges are in their chambers discussing a case as, as regularly happens. Uh, the fact is that if all of them are to be able to understand each other in their desired mother tongue, uh, they have to be able to follow along that conversation without having to have the interference of translation and, and all that. I understand deeply how much uh, when uh, you're in a room where everyone speaks English but nobody or only a few people speak French, how the French speakers end up having to use their second language and can be at a disadvantage. And we want to make sure uh, that the message of, of Canada being a country uh, in which French and English are truly uh, the official equal languages, uh, that anyone can be reassured uh, that all the arguments will be properly understood uh, by everyone on the Supreme Court. I have to ask you about the polls because for so long you were riding so high in the polls and now you have dropped down precipitously at the same time that NDP leader Tom Mulcair is surging ahead. What do you think is going on? Why is Mr. Mulcair doing so well and you so poorly? Oh, you know what? I, I, as I said many times when the polls were, uh, were saying something different, I don't pay a lot of attention to polls or put much stake in them. And I think we've seen enough uh, election results over the, over the recent years across this country to, to know that they have to be taken with a healthy degree of skepticism. What I see is a desire for change that's manifesting itself right across the country, an openness uh, to not 
voting the way they used to. Uh, you know, we certainly saw that in Alberta and in other places where uh, people are tired of being taken for granted. And a genuine interest in who's got the best team, the best plan, the best vision for going forward. And I'm very, very excited about this election campaign where we'll be demonstrating the extraordinary team of candidates that we're putting forward, uh, the responsible plan for real change, for bringing back fairness uh, to Canada, to, uh, to growing our economy in ways that benefit everyone. These are the things that Canadians are looking for, and I'm excited to be uh, sharing that with people throughout the coming months. But it just doesn't seem to be resonating. You know what? We're at a point where uh, Canadians, as I said, are cynical about politics and not paying an awful lot of attention to what's going on in the federal scene right now. People are getting ready for the end of school, uh, for uh, beginning summer vacations, for going off with a family. It's only around Labor Day that people are going to actually start saying, OK, we've got a decision to make in a couple of months about what our future is going to look like. Let's pay a lot of attention to uh, what the different proposals are, who the different leaders are, and what they're going to be bringing to Canada. Justin Trudeau, leader of the Liberal Party, thanks very much for being here today. Appreciate your time. Always a pleasure, Tom.